set up your document according to the seventh edition of MLA, go first up to the Page Layout tab. Click on it and then click on the Margins Launcher arrow. In the big drop down menu that you see, click on Normal to place a one inch margin on all sides, top, bottom, left, and right. Next, you're going to choose what MLA calls an easily readable font, Times New Roman, Arial Calibri, stuff like that. To do that, go up to the Font Launcher arrow. Launch that dialog box, and then in that big dialog box, choose your font first, then choose your font style, make sure it is regular. Then choose your font size, 11 or 12. Now, close that box, and the next thing you're going to do in MLA is be sure to turn off automatic hyphenation. To do that, go up to the Page Layout tab again, but this time, click on the Hyphenation Launcher arrow, and then in that drop-down box, choose None. Close that box, and you've taken off that automatic hyphenation. Now you're going to set up your MLA header. Head means the top of the page, and this is the thing that's going to be repeated on each top of each page. So go first up to the Insert tab, click on the Insert tab, and then come over and click the Header Launcher arrow. Then in the drop-down menu that you see, you're going to choose Blank. Now, once that's closed, what you want to do is to move your cursor over to the far right side of the page until it is directly in line with the one inch margin. That means one inch from the top and one inch from the right side. Now, what you want to do is to type in your last name. Hit the space bar one time. Now, go back up to that insert tab again and this time come over and click on the number launcher arrow. Now, you're going to select your number style, and that's going to be current position. And now you see that header, it's got your name, space, page number, and Word is going to automatically number all of your pages in sequence with that header of your last name. Now, to exit from the header area, what you want to do is to double click either on the Word header, or you can double click anywhere in the body of the document. Now, what you want to do is go to the line spacing tool, click on that, and then in the drop down menu, be sure to select 2.0 or double spacing. In MLA, the entire document is double spaced. There is nothing else but double spacing in your MLA document. No extra lines between any of the elements. After you have set that double spacing, what you want to do is go to the Alignment Toolbar and click Left Align. Now you're ready to type in the info block on your MLA paper. You begin first by typing in your name. Hit Enter one time, gives you a double space. Now you're going to type in your teacher's name. Hit Enter, gives you a double space. Then you're going to type in the name of the course, all the course information that your teacher has asked you to supply, usually the name and number of the course, sometimes the section. And then hit Enter, and then the last thing you're going to type in is the date. Hit Enter one more time to give yourself another double space. And this time, go up to the Alignment Toolbar and select Center Alignment. Now your cursor is exactly in the center of the page and you're ready to type in the full title of your paper. If that title has two parts, be sure to separate the two parts with a colon. A couple other tips about your title whenever you type it in. Be sure to use title capitalization and what that means is you capitalize every word except articles, coordinating conjunctions, but and yet for or nor so, and prepositions. But for title capitalization, you always capitalize the first word and the last word of a title, no matter what they are. A couple more tips about, uh, about your title that you see here. Be sure not to do anything else to it. Don't underline it. Don't boldface it. Don't put it in quotes. Don't put it in all caps. And if you're going to italicize anything, italicize only the word or words that you would also italicize in the body of your paper. In other words, it's some kind of title of a work 
or some other kind of proper noun that you would italicize anywhere, including your title. Okay, the next thing we want to do after you have typed that title in, you want to hit enter to give yourself a double space, go back up to that text alignment toolbar and touch on left align. Now your cursor is all the way over to the left and you're ready to begin typing in the body of the, your paper. Your first paragraph, of course, and all your paragraphs in MLA have to be indented one half inch. You have two ways of indenting the first line of a paragraph. You can either hit the tab key one time, boom, that gives you a half space because a half inch tab is the default in Microsoft Word. There's another way of setting your first line indent. You can go up to the first line indent triangle, which is all the way up at the top, up above your paper, left click on that triangle, and then drag it over to the half inch mark. And that will also give you a half inch indention for your first paragraph. Now once you've got that indention set, just go ahead and type in the body of your paper. Now remember, Whenever you're using a computer word processor, it is not necessary to hit enter at the end of a line. You only hit enter whenever you have reached the end of a paragraph and you want to start a new paragraph. So once you get to the end of a paragraph, you hit enter and boom, you're going to start a new paragraph. You'll see that your line should automatically indent that half inch because you set it first and then you begin typing your second paragraph, your third paragraph, etc. Along the way, if you have a quotation that is longer than four lines, you're going to have to set that quotation off by itself into its own block. What you do is to first hit enter to create a new line, then you set off, you put in that five or more line quotation right there starting on that new first line, and then highlight that entire block and then just move that entire block over using your, your indent tool up at, up at the top. Your move it to the right, in this case, indent tool. And that's how you handle block quotations. Another couple of things about block quotations, since you're using the block format, quotation marks are not necessary for this block quotation and do not indent the first line of a block quotation. Okay, let's pretend that you've typed in the body of your paper. You're finished now. The next thing you want to do is to go back up there to that Insert tab, and this time select Page Break. Boom, you're on a new page because your work cited, the last page of your paper, must start on a new page. So go up to the Text Alignment uh, toolbar, click on Center, make sure your cursor is right in the center, and type in the words Works Cited in the middle of the page. Again, don't, uh, don't boldface those words, don't italicize them, don't underline them. It's simply plain Roman text, works cited. Hit enter one time, gives you a double space. Go back up to the text alignment toolbar, this time click on left alignment. Now your cursor is all the way over to the left, and all you have to do now is start typing in the text of each source. Type it in, again, without hitting enter or return, Type in all the information. Let word wrapping conduct itself. Now, for any line that must have hanging indention, and all lines after the first one, for a bibliographic citation like a works cited page, all lines after the first one must be indented a half inch to the right. What you want to do is to highlight the line or lines that should be indented. Now go up to the hanging indention triangle. Didn't know there was one? Up at the word, the bottom triangle up there is called your hanging indention triangle. Left click on it and drag it across half inch and that gives you your half inch hanging indention. Now hit enter, boom, double space, but continue typing in all of your sources. Be sure that there's nothing more than double space between each line of the source and each source itself. Another thing to keep in mind when you're typing in your sources, you must follow the MLA formats for each source type exactly. Now you can find those source formats beginning on page 123 of the MLA handbook and then also I'm going to be making a video on those different most frequently used source types and you can consult that video as well. So there you go. Good luck on your MLA paper.